Hi, Christina Lennon. From, Hello. From the United Kingdom on our show today, our second episode. And please watch the first episode, Funny Minds with Christina Lennon. It's, it's going to be absolutely excellent as this one is too. Welcome back, Christina. I'm, I'm just so excited to be with you today. And, and my son and I were just talking about a lot of the things that you said. And mm -hmm. some of them are, you know, we think about it, it could be very scary, like everyday thoughts, you're watching a movie, you're watching TV, and you never know the subliminal thought process yep. of people trying to get you to do what they want you to do, be who you they want you to be. Buy what they want you to buy. A lot of right. them, and it's it's, you know, it's really kind of a scary thought that, and I'm sure there's a think tank that's doing a lot of um, research and development on this. Mm -hmm. That do you know, do you work so with so there's there's lots of experiments that have been done using hypnosis, but it's it depends where the money is. So, for instance, marketing, they've got the budget to put into you know research things like that. So, so they have. Um, the government has got the budget to put into things like oh, that. Well, so yeah. they have. It's you know the last thing that's going to be proved is like for hypnotherapists that you know it helps with the IBS or with anxiety because hypnotherapists don't have a budget to you know of a million yeah. pounds to do lots of experiments but what we right. do is we work with people every day and see the results right but that's why I say everybody is a content consumer you know between you two you know, you've got what a son should be. You've oh, got what wow. a mother should be and your influences. <laughs> right, right. Well, have, have, um, you did speak about, you know, you, you've spoken to different governments and mm -hmm. do they, do they delve even deeper with you? Have they asked you to come back again? Do they ask you to come on a regular basis? Do you have like, or, or no, it's just, you, you go one time, you, talk to them you sit with them you generally it's a one-off thing you're working on something specific or okay. you know questions and then that's it unless you know anything else comes up but sometimes you go back to companies a couple of times or you work with different teams that kind of thing but oh. generally when it's on a consultation basis you go in you consult on that particular project and that's the end of that. When the project comes to yeah. an end, that's it. I, I would think in a corporate environment, you probably have multiple sessions for different. Yeah, yeah. So you know, they levels. might get you back every year for new, you know, new starters, or they might do courses every now and again. So they will get you back. Do um, you prefer to do uh, in person uh, on Zoom call? Do you do a little bit, a little bit of both, depending on the needs? I think. I mean, primarily my work is with individuals on Zoom and that's my comfort zone, you know, yeah. I do okay. it every day. Um, when I hear my voice without headphones in, I'm like, oh, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, <laughs> and then, you know, when I get a company saying, oh, you know, can you come and pre it's like, oh God, I've got to leave the house. I'll have to get properly dressed. And you know, <laughs> so. However, it's, Sometimes it's a challenge. It's a nice challenge. You know, it, it depends what the project is. Some things are really fun to work on and exciting and others are not so great. I've I've filmed for a reality TV show um, in the UK and, you know, hypnotized people on the show for therapy. And that was a really nice project to work on. Um, some projects you get and it's awful. You know, so a lot of TV work is terrible, terrible. So I could see producers in America like lining up to have their worst actors and actresses hypnotized to behave themselves and not go yeah. fit on the scene. Yeah, that, but yeah, that would work well. But yeah, I mean, you get a lot, I get a lot of um, celebrity, like for, for instance, singers, you know, all of a sudden someone's an amazing singer and they get booked to travel the world and they're terrified of flying. That's quite a regular oh, thing. Yeah. So, oh, you know, yeah. Yes. 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 so I've worked with some 
huge names that are huge names now at the start of their career so that they could actually get up and perform in front of all those people because you might be a brilliant singer but have you got the balls to go out in front of you know a few million or 250,000 too exactly yes I mean you you can be a great my son's a musician and since he's five years old playing the guitar but you know Getting out on the stage in front of thousands and thousands of people doesn't bother him. He's an entertainer. Mm. He'll, he'll, he'll go out in front of anybody. But a lot of people, mm. it's really a scary yeah. fact for them to be actually on that stage facing all those people. Well, the, my my anxiety that I dealt with with touring and traveling is we, you know, I was in a tribute show, which you'd appreciate because we uh, did tribute to Queen. <laughs> all right. <laughs> it was called Best of British. So all right. we did that, yeah. uh, tribute to Def Leppard. I mean, we, we toured around the country, out of the country, you know, Mexico, mm-hmm. Canada, yeah, everywhere. Um, but there's a lot of, not not so much for the performance aspect, but there's a lot of anxiety, like you said, with the traveling uh with uh the thought of being away from home for an extended so, period of time there's a I, lot of different things yeah with i deal a lot with um like traveling or driving anxieties and mm-hmm. there is a portion of driving anxieties which is safe zones so yes. once they leave a safe zone they yes. they don't feel like the worst thing for somebody with a safe zone anxiety is like in the middle of the journey. So it's a two hour journey, an hour in, all of a sudden they're feeling the most panicky. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yes. Or being away from home for a certain length of time or mm-hmm. any or a certain distance. So that's a safe zone anxiety. The other driving anxiety is a trapped anxiety. Mm -hmm. They feel trapped. They can feel trapped behind a slow moving car. They can feel trapped on a motorway because they feel they can't get off. They can Mm -hmm. feel trapped in an airport because they feel like they can't get out of the airport. They feel trapped because the car feels too small or something like that or at traffic lights or Or in traffic. Driving, it's a lunatic. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) So and. And then there's the 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 minority is the speed. Most, but you'd think that'd be the most common. That's um that's a minor is the speed and danger. Most people aren't that come to me for driving anxieties aren't scared of crashing or you know same with people that are scared of flying. Most of them aren't scared of crashing. They're scared of being scared, you know. And then there's yeah. another one that's sensation. Um, it's movement. You know, so mm. I'm one of those. When I'm on a plane, I like don't like sickness. the movement, and it's it's quite it's partially physical because you know I get dizzy easily if I turn too okay. fast. You know, if mm. I look up at tall buildings, I have to hold on to something because you know otherwise I go dizzy. So it's like oh, yeah. a sensation thing. So some people have that anxiety whilst driving as well, going round roundabouts, or they feel that the road's too vast. So mm. even with the driving anxiety, there can be loads of like different ways it it sort of you know it affects them. I would assume heights is a big one. Oh, it is for me. It's not that common, to be honest. It's not really. Really? It's I mean, I think it is a common fear, but it's not one that people generally come to come to you for. for. Yeah. Really driving. For yeah. I don't know whether it's just well, I mean, I used to have a fear of heights. I just didn't go up anywhere high. It didn't really affect yeah, my life yeah. in any great way, yeah. you know. Whereas driving, flying, they affect your life in in big ways. So it might be very, very common. It's not something I get very often. Yeah. Now you mentioned uh, in the previous episode, uh, which I know everybody's going to watch. Um, oh yeah. I'm going to go back and watch this. This is great. <laughs> um, you mentioned covert uh, hypnotism. Talk mm-hmm. about that. Yeah. Could so, you co- that really a little bit deeper? Sure. So, for instance, um, you may or may not have seen that I have a dog that hypnotizes people. I did see you have a dog. <laughs> But I didn't know it hypnotizes people. So so part of my stage show, I have a dog, Hypno Dog, that hypnotizes people. So my dog has no special abilities other than we have taught her to stare at people. 
So she gets ham when she I stares know. at people. Yeah. So what happens is I have to make sure that those people that are going to be kneeling in front of her believe that she's a hypno dog. So I have, I have to use covert hypnosis methods most of the time. Yeah. I could, the easiest way for me to do it was be for me to just hypnotize them and tell them that dogs a hypno dog and look in its eyes and you fall asleep. That's a neat, really easy way. And sometimes I'll use that way, but we don't always, when doing TV shows or other kinds of shows, I don't always have that luxury. Mm -hmm. Or when I'm hypnotizing a judge or something, you know, of a show, I can't just do that because then they'd know. So what I have to do is if I turn up at a show and I aren't going to be hypnotizing them overtly, I turn up at the show and I will hide the dog. I'll be like, nobody can see the dog. And I make a big fuss of it. And there's always a bit of a slip. So my daughter will let the dog out and I'll be like, oh my God, no, get the dog, don't look, don't look. So everybody is like, oh my God, you know, I'm planting that seed. Yeah, that's a covert mm -hmm. method. I'm already planting the seed that this dog is very powerful. Yeah. Already, okay. once they hear about it, they'll go Google it. And they'll see the dog hypnotizing people. So that's the next layer of kind of suggestion that's going in there. Then while I were preparing to go on TV or whatever we're doing, I will be saying to them, right, when I, I'll, firstly, I always make sure that they're suggestible. I get rid of anybody that isn't. But then I'll start saying things like, right, when we go out on stage, you need to kneel on that cross and when you kneel at the cross, I want you to kneel upright. And I'll tell you why in a minute. When you kneel upright, you're going to look. I'll put the dog on my knee. You'll look in the dog's eyes. When you fall, make sure that you don't bang your head on my chair as you go down. So I am giving them the suggestion that they're there that they will fall. But if I say to you, you will fall, that little thing in your head will go, no, I won't. But because right. I'm saying... When you fall, make sure you don't bang your head. The when you fall goes straight into the subconscious mind. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's a okay. hypnosis. Okay. Then what happens is, so they're all stood backstage now. They're feeling a bit like, oh my God, what's, you know. Also, there's loads of people watching them, you know. They kneel on the spot. I get them to kneel upright. Now, you try and kneel upright, even for a few seconds, you will start to mm -hmm. right. sway. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've taught I will bring the dog on and I'll make the dog face the other way. And then I will turn the dog to look at the person who is now knelt with everybody staring at them, feeling very conscious, yet yeah? worrying about is this real? What's happening? They have to then focus on the dog's eyes. It might take 30 seconds, never takes that long, but they have to focus. They're going to be wobbling. When I turn the dog around, I say to the dog, look. Now, the dog knows when I say, look, she's going to get some ham. So straight away, her pupils <laughs> dilate, her ears go up, and her she'll she'll be like, where? Do you know what I mean? So she's like, <laughs> straight away, she's like just relaxing. And then she's like, so they're like, oh, shit. Then <laughs> as, as her pupils dilate, if you imagine the lights on the spot, stage yeah. in everybody goes it looked like the dog's eyes lit up it's like yeah it was just a pupils dilating and the light but all <laughs> these things and then they're looking at the dog and they're hearing this music and before you know it bang if i get i always pick the most suggestible person out of the lot because however the first goes the rest go yeah. So there's a lot of things I do that uh, I put them in positions where they're more likely, you know, I, okay. I say things to them in a, you know, using neuro-linguistic programming to make sure that they do that. Mm -hmm. So it's, that is covert hypnosis. That is using different methods. So for instance, I did a session on a client and all of a sudden, the sun shone through the window onto her face. By this point, she had her eyes closed. And I said to her, you'll feel the sun. And when she woke up, she was like, oh, my God, you know what made me go really deep? When you said the sun, I could feel the sun. I thought, yeah, the sun was actually on your face. And that's why I said <laughs> you can feel the sun, because I knew she'd be able to feel the sun. But if I see people are like, 
you know, blinking, you're like, oh, you're blinking, you're feeling, and they're like, I am blinking. Yeah, you're blinking because you're staring at a spot. Do you know what I mean? It's like, (laughs) it's, there's a lot of things and tips and tricks that it's difficult to explain, but I'm looking at them to see what's happening so I can take advantage of what's happening with them as well. Okay, so you use that a lot. Do you use it a lot in your therapy sessions yeah. or only when so, you think? So for instance, if I've got a client who, so say as we start the induction, I'll be like, right, put your hands on your lap, palms upwards, because that feels weird. That feels weird for you. If you put your hands in your lap now, palms upwards, mm. is a weird way to have your hands. And yeah, well, your yeah, hands start to feel funny. And then I'll make them, I won't let them just sit back in their chair. I'll make them sit up and I'll make them look at a spot on the ceiling. And while they're doing that, I'm talking about something else. Well, their eyes are getting tired. While I'm, you know, while I'm like, you know, in, in a few moments time, you're going to be feeling this and but you're going to listen to my voice and follow my instructions as carefully as possible. And I get compliance off them. Are you ready to be hypnotized? Are you? And they're like, yes, yes. So I'm like brainwashing them. Then they're looking at this spot and I'm like, you know, and you're feeling starting to feel tired and your eyes are starting to feel tired. And then they'll blink and I'll be like, and before long, your eyes will start to blink and they're like, oh my God, my eyes are blinking. This is all going on in the head. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then I'll be like, and when I say close my eyes, you'll close your eyes and your body will go. So as soon as I say close their eyes and they'll be like, boom. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Wow. It's, it's a big build up and I'm looking at what's happening with them. I'm taking advantage of some things. You know, if I smell a smell, I'll be like, all of a sudden you can smell this smell. Or, you know, I'll just take advantage of whatever's happening at the Whatever. time. Yeah. Okay. Do, yeah. They, do you have, uh, I was reading something and it said it was talking about uh, consent. Do you need mm-hmm. consent to be hypnotized? No. No. Okay. No, I can't imagine so, how you would. So if I say to you, I'm going to hypnotize you now, and you say no, and then I try and hypnotize you, it's not going to work because you're just going to do the opposite of whatever I say. Yeah. However, mm-hmm. if I just have a chat with you and start to use some funny things, and right. it was a, a really funny example, I was sat chatting with my brother-in-law about hypnosis and we were having a really deep conversation about hypnosis and then all of a sudden I kind of I lost my train of thought you know when you just forget what you're talking about and I stopped (laughs) and I kind of looked away and he went what are you doing are you doing it now (laughs) and he just thought there was something weird happening which it was I just kind of stopped what I was talking about and like for us, because I'd I'd forgotten what I was talking about, but he thought something it's was happening. Alzheimer's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're just we're just getting old. I go in the other room and forgot why I walked in there. Exactly. Exactly. Well, there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. When you change your environment, you change your thought processes. So as you enter another room, you have a different thought process which is why you forget. If you then go back to the room where you were, you'll remember it again and hopefully then carry it with you. Yeah. But that's that's, that's a really good way of shifting states, changing rooms, changing your environment. You can really quickly change your state, like your emotion or whatever, by just changing room. Sure. So is your, before I ask you that, um, moving forward as an author and and maybe your tv show and stuff you know i'm really sorry about you know um what england has gone through losing the queen Mm -hmm. for such an enormous amount of time i mean like it was just like heartbreaking you know Mm -hmm. to watch everything so you know my condolences to to everybody in england on losing their queen because she was a beautiful Mm -hmm. person yeah she was lovely yeah i didn't know her personally but yeah, she was she was a lovely, lovely, sweet old lady. But yeah, she could have used you for a couple of her kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so you're going to continue with your practice. That's very mm-hmm. important to you. Yeah. Um, you looking at maybe the possibility of a TV show, which is Possibly. very very interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And any and I'm sure any other invites that come up along the way. 
Maybe if it's interesting enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really. And you're an author. How how many books have you written? And I have I've got a lot on my computer that I'm writing and you know. Um okay. so it's a forever but, process. Yes, yeah. So I've written um, Under the Influence. So that is about my journey with Princess and, you know, the TV shows that I've been on. And it's it's a funny kind of anecdotal book about, you know, we, every TV show we've done, hilarious things have happened. You know, she's bitten James Corden. She's, you know, she, oh, all sorts I, of things. I'd love to see that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't keen <laughs> for good reason. Um, so yeah, the the book is just full of like I've done fifty TV shows and it's full of all the stories about that and how it all came about. Um, the other book is Make It Mindset and that is more about my therapy stuff. I didn't write it; it's like a transcript of an interview, but it, it kind of tells you the basis of how okay. to change your mindset. Um, yeah. So, and then I am also writing a book about comparing religion and hypnosis. Wow. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. That's, um, I was know, brought up get, uh, Roman Catholic. The philosophical end of, of, mm. of the religious aspects of, yeah, of different yeah. people. Yeah. Well, I, I would have to say that, uh, you know, religion as a whole all the wax where you know belief not belief what to believe who to believe how to believe it um but i could see how i believe was, god was a hypnotist and a coach <laughs> and he was a brilliant well, that's, one. <laughs> that's exactly what i'm saying i mean to, to, in order to corral that many people for so many thousands of years to get them to believe one thing i mean that's that's some serious hypnotism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we highest, can learn a lot. Level. Yeah, we can learn a lot from these pastors. Have you have you seen the guys that like take the cut off and and people oh, yeah. like fall over in their oh, way? Yeah. That's mass and hypnosis. They start screaming yeah, and, you know. it's mass hypnosis. It's hypnosis. A hundred percent hypnosis. It has to be. It is. It is. Oh, I've, can, I've can studied it, be, it. It's hypnosis. Can it be? Can I play devil's advocate? No pun intended. Um. <laughs> Uh, can it be such a deep belief in your faith? That's it, that's hypnosis. I don't. I yeah, I couldn't imagine that. No, <laughs> you, it, just, it's deep. What is deep belief? Deep belief is deep belief is deep, hypnosis. But they don't know what deep belief is. They're being told that they better deeply believe it. <laughs> it's, you know what I'm it's saying? The, it's the stand up, sit down, stand, you know, like when you go to church, kneel, stand, sit, kneel, right, stand, right. sit, sing songs, chant things over and over again. It's, um, you know, your most suggestible, most th first thing on the morning, last thing at night. And the best thing to do is to repeat statements to yourself. What do you do when you're of faith? You pray, you kneel every night, every morning by your bed and you pray and you say the same things over and over again. This is how I help people get over anxiety. And if they're religious, I'll be like, right, let's use God in this. Do you know what I mean? Let's bring God into okay, the mix. Okay. Let's do it a faithful way. If I've done that with people, I've got them a better connection with God through hypnosis. Mm -hmm. That's very <laughs> so interesting. So I'm not saying okay. I'm not saying hypnosis, uh, you know anything's real not real i'm not saying it's all just nicely blended together yeah well and you, i guess when you you meet somebody and you hear what their problems are and you're looking for a lot of different avenues to deal with them to help them and if religion God can be is one going of them one of them exactly whether it's that whether it's Allah, whether it's God, whether it's whoever you believe in, Jai, right. whoever it's, right. you know, if you have that belief, I'm going to use that to help you get to you where you need to go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my mom was of faith, very, you know, and it's a brilliant thing to have. It is a brilliant thing to have, to believe in something outside of yourself. The new religion is law of attraction, believing in the universe. You know, mm -hmm. people believe in a God or the universe or something like that. How about believing in ourselves? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
You know, is that Absolutely. not where the power comes from? Whether Absolutely. it was God, well, given, God given or not. That's true. And you, you probably would get a lot more out of a person if they would truly believe in themselves and, and mm -hmm. they'd be able to do a lot of things that they don't think they can do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, just make their, their journey of, of as, as fulfilling as possible. Really? Because that's really yeah. what it is. The journey yeah. and mm -hmm. you know, how to get through it. Yeah, this is our through. journey. This is our journey yeah. right now. We're on it. And, yeah. and we take different we take different routes along the way. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people now focus more or are, are looking at things more from an energy aspect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the there's the energy, you know, vibrations, things like mm -hmm. that. There's a universe. There's there's all sorts now. You know, there's this. Sure. You know, it, it isn't just God anymore. And yes. you know, for some people, you know, God a man sat on a cloud. It's energy. Yes. It's you know. Right. It, it depends what you believe. Because, I mean, if you look at the Bible, you're like, really? Some of the stories, you're like, is, you know, are we mm -hmm. supposed to believe to this? That but... was how long ago, and it was people's perception of what was going yeah. on, yeah. you know, and everybody yeah. had a different perception of, of different things. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you read the Bible, it's really, it's not etched in stone. It's it's someone's perception. Yeah. you know, And it was so written by a man. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I do agree with you, Christina, that uh, Jesus definitely was a, lot, a hell of a coach in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> probably, Skills. Probably one of the all time best. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> then you've got people like Hitler, you know? Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, God. Really? I mean, mm. well, that's yeah. When you go back to you can use yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I know Trump was very well trained in hypnotic methods. Yeah. I Love him or hate him, he was a great hypnotist. Uh, well, you're fired. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I yeah. Well, you, over here, you love him, you hate him. It's you know, it's whatever. I'm not going to get into him. No, but, no. But I met him. I met him. I, I I used a lot of his his business philosophies throughout my years in business. So, mm. you know, in that aspect, um, as a businessman, you know, I could appreciate his thought process mm. on how to yeah. run businesses. Yeah, mm. it's it's funny because I I was asked um, at the beginning of COVID. I was asked to do a it be interviewed on a podcast about people wearing masks like that they are brainwashed idiots because they are wearing masks and this person was so far on one side that they were a brainwashed idiot and then mm -hmm. the people so far and that's how you know when you're a brainwashed idiot because you are really one side or the other if mm -hmm. you're somewhere in the middle and you're like, well, I can see what they're saying and I can see what they're saying and right. I'm not too sure, generally you're quite stable. Right. Well, yeah, when you see the way boss, I think I'm stable. <laughs> you know, you have to have balance. Exactly. If they don't have any sense of balance and they are this way or that way, I, yeah. I mean, it just becomes yeah. apparent. And, I, I, and, you know, it's weird because through COVID, which – was in, incredibly insane and you're not prepared for it and mm -hmm. that is definitely going to keep you in business for many years and there's now. a lot of fear. that's created oh, a lot of it was great out. for me um, yeah <laughs> but i you know i like a lot of other people you know and I, i'm talking more along the lines of the uh social media aspect that's really what opened my eyes because i watched people go one minute from totally happy and normal and then COVID hit and the political stuff started happening and I watched the way social media handled it and how they manipulated it. And I mm -hmm. watched people that were family and friends going at each other mm -hmm. to the death, you mm -hmm. know, like yeah. cutting them out of their lives and, and blocking mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Because they were I, so I dealt, I dealt with that firsthand of people, you know, I remember one particular lady was so terrified of everything. She just had a new baby and her husband was a builder and he wasn't paying any attention to any restrictions coming home, 
bringing all these germs home for her, you know, and she was going out of her mind with it. And it was in the same household, somebody who was like, oh, blood of bloody nonsense. The government are trying to put a chip in us and control us. And she (laughs) she, and she was like, oh, my God, this this horror, you know, and it was like maybe somewhere in the middle is the right place to be where you can see everybody's point of view and none of us right. know what's going on the government didn't know what was going on because it was Nobody so new. knew what was going on really, <laughs> so they honestly. made mistakes and then when they made mistakes people like see they got it wrong i was right all along they were trying to control and it's just it's like stay in the it- middle it's Open like minded. his story yeah. and and her story and somewhere the truth lies in between Exactly. Yeah. But that's where you know people are being controlled and that's where cults and things like that pe- pick people that are easy manipulated. They believe a certain thing. They're fed a lot of fear to believe it even more. And it's the same with sales, you know, it I don't know, you know, anything, you know, you you feed fear so that you can sell the thing. So Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. And again, we're going to come to an end and we could just probably talk to you all day because it's so interesting. <laughs> we but can't because I'm hungry. <laughs> Christina, tell tell people where they can reach you. So if you do, if you Google Hypno Dog, you're going to find me on all platforms. Um, I'm literally on virtually anything. If it's just even, I don't really do Twitter, but you'll find me on there. Um, but yeah, Christina Lennon or Hypno Dog. Easy. Well, what kind of dog is uh, Hypnodog? She's a, everyone thinks she's a Pomeranian, but she's actually a German Spitz, a black fluffy ball. I seen she was black yeah. and fluffy, but in the picture, I could admit I was like she couldn't made, really make it out. Yeah. 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 And, German uh, Spitz. Oh, that's I, I have a, I have a King Charles Cavalier. Oh wow! Yeah, Perfect. intelligent dog. Little Duchess. Oh. Yeah. Lively. <laughs> she's a child. She's basically yeah. a child. Yeah, um, too too lively are. for me. <laughs> well, Christina, again, it was a it was really truly a pleasure to meet you, to talk and to you, to be with you. Um, I I wish we could be longer, but we can't. <laughs> but um, we will keep track of you, and uh, of course, I will let you know when your episodes are going to air. So. You- mm-hmm. Um, watch yourself go out to your social media and share <laughs> yeah and, I'll share it with uh, my network yeah Absolutely. <laughs> again we thank all of our audience and our followers funnyminds.com please go on take a look at us please take a look at our store there's so many funny things that you can find get for your family or friends and our two organizations that are very close to our heart are Women's Breast Cancer and St. Jude's Children's Hospital. And if you go on our site, there is a big purple donate button. Please help these people because there's so many children and women in need of your help. And again, I thank you and I thank our audience and love everybody. And yes, no problem. um, It's been fun. You are an amazing (laughs) person. (laughs) Let's be, be honest. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no so to all of our followers, be happy, be healthy. Don't forget to smile and laugh because laughter is the best medicine that there is. And I say goodbye to all. Bye-bye Take now. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, Christina. <laughs> Thank you.